you guys are still very much judging me for the 6700 XTs, which aren't mining. Let's go ahead and look at the Radeon 7 rig, which I brought in from outside. It's in one of those 2018 Octominers. And I have no idea why it's not responding, but let's go ahead and take the cards out, try them one by one, and see if we can identify a problem. Other than that, I don't know. Let's put some NVIDIA in this rig and see if we can get it going again. I'm guessing at least one of these is dead. So I'm going to slot them in one by one, and we'll see if they still mine once my test bench boots. <laughs> so I literally put all nine of these Radeon 7s and this Oddball 5700 XT into my test bench, and literally none of them would even show up. However, I put in the Cute Pet 5600 XT, then... The 5700 showed up just fine, then the Radeon 7 showed up just fine. So I don't know what's going on, but I'm booting it right now and I'm going to mine on it. Let's just see if the cards are okay. I, I truly don't know what's going on. But anyway, unfortunately, I have killed a Radeon 7. We have code 43 to a card finally. So it's a bummer, but oh well. Farewell, Radeon 7. Well, we're back at her after figuring out that I only killed one Radeon 7, and I wanted to take another stab at these old Octominers because, that's a little weird, um, mainly because the one I have down in my garage has eight 5700 XTs in it, and I did try to put more cards in that one initially, and it didn't seem to recognize very well, neither did more than 10 in that Radeon 7 rig, which is this actual rig. However, I put 12 6700 XTs in it, and they all 12 show up, and they all mine. So, hi Modi. Not exactly sure what was going on there, but this is great news, and I'm going to seal this back up, and this will just be a rig. However, before I do that, I do want to... Looks like the, the power supply fan's going the wrong way here, and I also want to resistor mod it. So I'm going to do that real quick, then we'll uh, close it up, and yeah, this should be a successful rig. It's on Ergo right now just to see if everything is hunky-dory, and yeah, seems like we're actually in pretty good shape. Alright, she's modded and back. So much better. I elected to not swap the fan around on this one because it's a front fan. All the other old Octos I have, the PSU's back here, so it made sense to blow it that way. But this one's going to be sucking in from the outside. Seems like it's pulling a decent amount of air. And again, I've personally had good luck with that. These are all uh, resistor modded. Those are all resistor modded. So not necessarily suggesting you do it on your own, but all of mine are. And I personally have good luck with it. I don't have insanely high ambient temperatures. And obviously I run cards pretty efficiently. So your mileage may vary. Probably wouldn't, but I mean, listen, that's so nice. Well, now I'm taking a look at my Dell OEM 3080s that I had to buy as is. There is the stock PowerLogic fan. Interestingly enough, the RGB, well, I guess it's not RGB, the LED for the GeForce RTX script runs through one of the fans. <laughs> I, I don't know, but anyway, this one is smoked. I can tell because I put an X on it. And I have some OE fans right here. Even one of the uh, same PowerLogic with the pass through. So I'm gonna get that replaced and hopefully this card will behave itself. Cause these are actually pretty good. I gotta level with you guys. Yeah, I don't think the bearing is supposed to come out like that. It's nice to see though, these are ball bearing fans, dual ball bearing, so good quality, but nothing's gonna hold up to that kind of abuse. So anyway, card number two swapped out. We'll do a little test on it. We're just running flux with a medium OC, I would say. 110-ish souls, 187 watts. So far, so good. I do think these were just massively freaking out with having one fan unreadable, essentially. So hopefully the cards are a-okay. I would really, really like that. Well, since... <laughs> Hi, Modi. Well, since I am done replacing the fans on these 6700 XTs, I feel like... Hi, buddy. Hi. Hello. Yeah. Only dumb cats meow. <laughs> Got you good. 
Uh, I feel like rebuilding the CMP30HX rig that I had before I ended up selling my CMPs to ARCs. Since then... Okay, you're so annoying. Wow. So, uh, oh, both of them are here now. Anyway, since then I have bought more CMP30HXs. I have seven. And then I also have a Gigabyte that roughly matches the look, right? But a 1660Ti. So in the interest of just putting something together that will run on 120, that I can put around the house for now, that makes heat. I'm going to put these back in the server case, and we'll get it booted back up just to make sure the install is still good, make sure it hashes, and then, I don't know, maybe mine with it, but I haven't built a rig in a while, so let's do that. These grubby little cases, which are now deemed or similar because of the original Nerd Gears video, are just weird man external psu i'm running a free power supply that a resistor modded the fan on to make it a little bit quieter and i think this fan is still completely screwed uh i do think it spins but it makes some noise and other than that i've put in a fan controller and some fans which are not technically high enough rpm or airflow but for cards like this running radiant it's actually more than enough so, seeing as the best cooler is actually on the TI, I'm going to put that in the hottest part of the case, which is by the CPU, and then we're going to run CMP30s across the back. What a bucket of magnificence. And yeah, the Gigabyte GTX is a little bit out of place, and then for whatever reason, some of the CMPs have the scripting for CMP. But I digress. Everything's mounted except for the TI which I cannot get a screw into, but it's quite sturdy where it is, so happy enough with that. Let's throw the lid on it, power it up, give it Ethernet, and see if it still registers back in Hive. Well, I can definitely hear that CPU fan. My classic howl, bad bearings. But we do have Ethernet lights, so let's go over to Hive and see if she's still chooching. <laughs> well, not only did it come right back up, but it started mining immediately, so... That's cool, I guess. Radiant is still good. I did take note of the wall, sorry, the wall power consumption. However, I'm going to go ahead and update BZ real quick. We'll get it rebooted, and then we will compare software and hardware power numbers just to see exactly what we're working with here. At least it's all Micron, right? Anyway, happy it works. That little case is ugly, man, but it does the job. I love that. PC fans on reduced speed are more than enough to cool these things. So we're pulling 273 software, and we were running 550 even on this thing before adding this rig. So that brings us to uh, 320, 322 watts. God, that's nothing. Well, since that was too easy, I actually kind of want to try this thing out. So this is a Parallel Miner product. You've undoubtedly heard of Parallel Miner before. They make a lot of the breakout boards for server power supplies and things like that. This is a product they make called the Power Island, and effectively what it lets you do is make your own redundant power supplies. So let me open this thing up and let's just demo it and see how it works. All right, so effectively what we have here the red inputs are what you would hook in your server or ATX power supply to, and that will fire up the voltmeter and it will actually make all of the central white outlets active. So typically, if you have just one power supply connected, you probably would not want to hook up more than five of these white ones. But if you did have, for instance, I don't know, a 1200 watt PSU hooked into each one of these, then you realistically probably could have all of these populated on GPUs, for instance. You could potentially also use this for ASICs. I believe it has a 2.4 kilowatt capacity, which is quite high. It does appear to have an acrylic backing, so that's kind of nice. It's mounted and isolated. Probably good when you're dealing with that much DC power, you don't want people to kill themselves. So what I was thinking when I bought this product, I have another one of these server cases sitting right down there. And currently it's running on my house rate power 24 hours a day because it's for the Red Panda Mining Tower test. If you're not familiar with that, head on over to Red Panda Mining's channel and just type in tower and you will see his stack of 6x6600 XTs that are spec mining different coins. He ran out of cards, so I am spec mining Meow Coin on mine. So anyway, 
I digress. I have a house power rate of 17 cents per kilowatt hour, but I also have on my PDU right down there, a time of day rate. So 9 p.m. to 9 a.m. weekdays and all of weekends, all of holidays are 10 cents per kilowatt hour. But if I run it any time between 9 a.m. and 9 p.m. on a weekday, it's 23 cents per kilowatt hour. So what I'm thinking is I can actually arbitrage and I can run house 17 cent during the day using one PSU hooked into this and then having the output go into the server case here. And then I can use a smart plug to shut off that PSU and I will have already kicked on the off-peak smart plug as well. So I'm thinking have on-peak, or sorry, house plugged in here and have the smart plug uh, turn off about five minutes after the peak uh, changeovers happened. And then I'll have the, the peak power supply over here and I'll have that kick on right when the power gets cheap. So there will be five minutes of dual rate pulling, but then I just want to have some safety net to make sure, you know, it's getting more power than it needs instead of cutting the power and then turning back on. So in a sense, that's what this thing is. We'll see how it works. Uh, yeah, I don't know. It's a cool little item and I've only seen one YouTuber cover it, which is kind of a shame. So this is just a proof of concept. You would definitely run more than two six pins to power a rig like this, but this is only pulling 330 watts and we're just gonna do a test with it. So now I have some of the six pins powering this rig plugged into the power island and I have that power supply, which is already powering the 86600s, powering the power island. So in theory, if I pull this PDU plug right here, that PSU will pick up the load. And it has indeed, interestingly enough. We've also picked up a little bit of efficiency, it looks like, unless I crashed the rig, which is possible. Let's go see if this is still showing up in Hive OS. Yes, indeed, we are still mining away. So that did pick up the slack, which means that very likely we can use the uh, breakout board in its intended purpose, which is to use two PSUs in one rig instead of one PSU in two rigs. So oddly, I just hooked up a 1200 P2 to the power island, and it's back feeding power into the PSU and turning at least some of it on, which is a little bit strange. Hmm. All right, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna show you both meter boxes and we have the 1200 P2 on the left. I'm gonna flip it on. We should see the load start to come up on that PSU. Then I'm gonna pull the PDU cord on the server power supply. Interesting, yep. So that's, that's actually pretty good. The efficiency is not quite as good, but you can see the power factor is way better. But right now, there's nothing going to that server power supply. And although there is some droop, for sure, 11.5, the EVGA 1200 is now picked up all the slack. Now if I plug the server PSU back in, you can see the load drops to almost nothing on the EVGA. And we shut off the EVGA really nothing. So it does work, but I would want to find a power supply that doesn't do the backfeed thing. Because even though you've cut off the main source of power on the outside with the smart plug, it's still spinning the fan and it's potentially leaving parts of the circuitry alive, which doesn't seem like a good thing. 